welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartook-41. In our last episode, the party discovered Karina's new pet had its advantages, and the tent they had purchased may be magical. A group of bandits had stumbled into their campsite, but apparently did not notice the trail tent or the party inside. As the group peered out, they found the odds to be even and opted to deal with the bandits the merchant had warned them about. We rejoin the group as Farkas calls three and the party charges out of the tents to attack the bandits. As Cabe Silvertongue and Fargus Stoutheart exited the enclosure, they peeled off to each corner with the rest of the group heading straight out to face their own foes. The ranger had opted to go after the apparent leader of the group, who was caught off guard, but recovered quickly. The bard found himself at odds with two individuals, and the rest of the group each squared off with one bandit apiece. Getting the drop on the leader, Fargus ordered the man to surrender, and was shocked to see his opponent calmly sipping wine from a bottle. Or what? replied the man. His reaction stumped Fargus, who let the weapon lower just a bit, allowing the bandit leader to throw the wine bottle at the human, causing him to duck. Melee then erupted in the clearing, with the bandits drawing their blades against the cautious party. Lady Irena unleashed several magic missiles and leveled her opponent, while sending a third missile at Karina's opponent that had deftly sidestepped the wave's attack. Bolger was taking on a human that was twice the size of the gnome and appeared to be new at fighting. The bandit swung his pitted blade awkwardly at the sailor, who easily sidestepped the attack and cracked the man in the knee, causing him to drop like a stone. Cabe had his hands full with a pair of bandits against him, but did slash each one while sustaining a cut to the chin in the process. Sister Elaine sized up her opponent, who made a crude remark about her sex, in response, the cleric pulled up her robe to display her calf. The distraction worked as she quickly bashed the man upside the head, knocking him unconscious. Standing over the bandit, the priestess shook her head before stepping onto the body and moving to help the bard. Fargus had his hands full with a more experienced bandit leader, who managed several slashes to the group's leader. Karina and her wounded opponent circled each other and each landed several blows for almost no damage. You're mine, snarled the dirty bandit as he raised his blade over his head. Karina wasted no time and twirled around stabbing the bandit in the chest just as Lady Irena buried a dagger into his back. The man's eyes opened wide and fell to the ground in a look of horror. The women nodded to each other but quickly noticed a quartet of additional bandits coming around the way. We've got more problems yelled out the mage as Karina stepped in front of the woman in a defensive stance. Bolger heard the cry and began to move to their position. Sister Elaine and Cabe were having difficulty subduing their pair, and Fargus was starting to lose ground against the strong leader. The bard and cleric sandwiched their bandits between them and shoved them into each other, causing both to fall. One bandit lost his weapon, and the other found Cabe's foot squarely resting on the blade. Both men put up their hands in surrender and were ordered face down. Give up, boy. You're no match for me. Even with that pretty armor, I'll be taken, taunted the bandit leader. Fargus matched the verbal challenge as the bandit leader started to notice his men falling. A pair of warriors continued to fight with each wounding the other additionally. As the four bandits approached from the side, Bulger and Karina stepped in front to meet the onslaught. As each raised their weapon, a wall of opaque strands formed up between the six combatants, embroiling them all into the stickiness. Sister Elaine and Cabe finished securing their pair and started to move across the gap to help Fargus. Seeing the route, the bandit commander laughed and spit on the ground in front of the ranger before kicking a patch of dirt at him. Fargus fell back, temporarily blinded, and fell to the ground swinging his sword wildly in defense. The bandit leader sped around the rock formation as the cleric and bard reached Fargus. After being yelled at, 
He stopped swinging his sword and was assisted to his feet by the pair. The sound of a galloping horse was heard leaving the area and Fargus regained his sight. Looking to the other end of the clearing, the trio noticed the bizarre sight as a wall of spider webs had formed up with some trees and the rock formation as anchors. A quartet of bandits, as well as Karina and Bulger, were currently stuck in the strands. Lady Irena turned to the trio and advised, Hey, a little help over here? Scanning the area, no other bandits were spotted and the trio helped cut the sailor and the waif out of the strands. We'll need to secure them, pointed out the mage. Strands have a short life. Cave approached the struggling bandits and mocked them. Stuck, are you? A little problem with movement? As the half-elf extended his blades to one man's throat, who quickly stopped struggling. Surrender? He said meekly. The bandits stopped struggling and nodded, with webs covering their head and subsequently cut, were cut out. After being secured with the last of the hemp rope, Sister Elena and Fargus moved to the other side of the rock formation where they discovered a wagon with a pair of mules. Inside the wagon was a plethora of pilfered items along with more rope and some meager supplies. Seeing no additional foes, they returned to the group who had lined up the captured bandits and reported only two casualties for the other side. Bolger had apparently done significant damage to his opponent and the Karina Irena slashing victim was far too gone to save him as well. Fargus was bleeding quite badly and was quickly given one of the healing potions to secure his health. Other injuries were not serious and were quickly bandaged. Cabe sat down in front of the captured bandits and began to interrogate them. The adventurers quickly discovered that the group was known as the Green Sash Gang, which fit their attire. They had been on the road for several months and their leader, Cornwall, was the one who had escaped. Bulger and Karina watched over the bound prisoners as well as peepers who had been retrieved from the tent. The presence of the axe beak alone was enough to keep the bandits in line as the small creature ran up and down the line in front of them. The antics garnered a smile from a bandaged Karina. The senior members of the group discussed their options and revealed the presence of the cart and mule. It was decided that the dead would be buried here and the prisoners taken to Colby for whatever judicial action was necessary. The quartet returned to address the bandits and asked if anyone was hungry. The dejected bandits each shook their head and were fed one at a time as peepers kept a close eye on them. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, Thanks for listening.